new concepts and ideas to help you reach your full potential. Reach your full potential. Reach your full potential. Small win, small win, small win. Keep your momentum going. The Success 101 Podcast. Welcome to the Success 101 Podcast. This is your host, Jared Warren. And each episode, my goal is to bring you a new concept or idea to help you maximize your full potential. Thanks for joining me here today. Now let's kick things off. Boom, and welcome back to the Success 101 Podcast. Guys, I'm so happy that you're joining me here today, and we've got a lot of ground to cover. As I talk to you guys about a couple of really key elements in From Success to Significance, your comments have been amazing. You guys have increased the traffic on riding in more than I ever imagined, and that means it's working. Curtis Estes and I had hoped that it would have this type of impact on people out there, and the response has been phenomenal from all over the world as you guys continue to order this book, and I'm so glad you're here joining me for yet another episode as we get ready to cover some pretty crucial ground today. So guys, check it out. If you want to get your hands on this book, please head to success101podcast.com forward slash book. And in the promo code, if you're in the United States, put success101. You will only pay the shipping cost and we're going to get a copy right out to you guys. If you're outside of the United States, please select the ebook reader for an immediate download of the same material. We've designed this in a Kindle PDF e-reader version form for those of you guys who aren't getting the paperback so that you can make your own notes on whatever type of mobile device, computer, Kindle-type platform that you have. And it's a quick and easy download at success101podcast.com forward slash book. And my team has been sending these things out like crazy since they started offering it months ago for just the shipping costs. They've extended the time frame that they thought they would leave it open for because of the demand. So as long as you guys are finding value in this, we're going to keep making it easy for you to get your hands on. I also want to mention the great people over at Ample. Guys, if you haven't had a chance to grab the 400 or 600 calorie meal replacement drink called Ample, that's A-M-P-L-E, and you're looking for peak performance, stop what you're doing right now and listen to this. You owe it to yourself to tap into what the people at Ample and my friend Connor Young are over there doing because this is a meal replacement drink unlike anything you guys have had before, unlike anything I've ever had before. It's loaded with high quality fats, super probiotic and prebiotic strains, grass-fed goodness, and tons of quality benefits that you guys need to go check out. All you have to do to grab 15% off your order is head to success101podcast.com forward slash ample. Again, that's A-M-P-L-E. And at checkout, enter success101 to grab your 15% off of this awesome meal replacement shake in a bottle. This is something that I've gotten a tremendous amount of benefit from, and I cannot wait for you guys to try this. And so many people are writing in saying, I'm grabbing my ample on the go each morning as I go out to work out, as I go to the office, and I'm getting better quality ingredients from all over the world than what I would be able to sit here and try to blend up and crush up and chop up in my own kitchen. Thank you, Ample, for creating such an amazing drink for all of us looking for higher levels of peak performance. And I cannot wait to see how many of you go out and grab your own order with 15% off and continue to comment into me about this drink that is loaded with the building blocks we need each day. Again, head to success101podcast.com forward slash ample to grab your 15% off today. Now, let's dive into our awesome show today about the book From Success to Significance. And so many of you, it's funny what you pick up on out there. So many of you have commented into me, why didn't we do the pyramid flip? Some of you even mentioned, Jared, you said several episodes ago, you were going to come back and cover the pyramid flip. Did you forget about it? No, I didn't. I was saving it for a very strategic time. If you look at the vision building activities that we've covered so far, kindling your energy by making your highlight reel, identifying your unique ability, activity number four, the to be list, activity number five, your personal legacy, activity number six, creating the bigger vision. Those were building blocks that we started with weeks ago in the six vision building activities But we only covered five. Why? Because I wanted to save the pyramid flip until today, after you had a chance to get your mind around many of the other things that we have built in here together. We're going to go back now and look at your wants and your shoulds and how you're building all of this into your calendar each day. So for those of you who have followed along and have been following in the book week after week, this journey, this awesome journey that we've been on since I started this, then we went into the five components for creating your strategy. 
the compelling why catalyst, the SMART goals formula, achieving balance and integration with the SMART goals action plan, actually putting that SMART goals formula to work, the rewards and consequences multiplier. I had huge response from people writing in about the consequences and rewards they were putting in place for their own desires. And then one of my all-time favorites, designing your ideal day. Then we moved into the five tactics for implementing your strategic plan. A couple of weeks back, I looked at leveraging your physical, mental, and emotional environment by creating a zone around you of inspiration where you can crush it every single day, setting up your personal board of advisors. And then today, along with the pyramid flip, we're going to cover making every day winnable in a game plan or roadmap that I'm going to show you. So thank you guys for journeying along with me and keep writing in. It's what lets me know that this is impacting you guys. But as we dive into the pyramid flip here today, what I want you guys to keep in mind is this purpose or this idea around helping you hone in what captures your best quality of life. How do we do that? We do that by identifying the moments that are working the best as well as those that are not working at all. See, so many times people want success or they want significance or they want to be an entrepreneur and they don't look at the ideas that are not working at all. Sometimes it's hard and we as humans avoid pain at all costs, including to our own sabotage by only trying to look at what's working, ignoring what's not working or not wanting to face money we feel like we've wasted on marketing plans in a business or activities in a business And we only want to look at those things that give us energy. The problem is those things give us energy falsely if we have a lot of other things that are not working that we fail to focus on. We all have activities we love doing, those that give us energy, as I mentioned, those that inspire us to further greatness. Yet most highly successful people spend only 5 to 15% of their time doing such activities. Isn't that crazy? 5 to 15% of their time doing activities that give you energy and inspire you to further greatness. Instead, most of us fill our calendars with activities that we do not want to do. We may even excel in those activities, but we are not passionate about them. And this misallocation, guys, of our time creates what Dan Sullivan of Strategic Coach calls a ceiling of complexity. And all that does is sabotage our forward progression, and it breeds massive amounts of discouragement. See, guys, the secret to success is setting up your calendar and your environment so that you're able to spend at least, if not more, but at least 50% of your time in the activities you love and excel at doing. Aligning your life in this way will produce what some CEOs consider genius level results over time with unparalleled satisfaction and ease. Eventually, creating a life by design directs you through the process of making this transition, replacing those dissatisfying activities with the ones that bring pleasure, satisfaction, joy, and growth. And let's face it, isn't that where we all want to be when it comes to designing our own life? For today's purposes, guys, the Pyramid Flip will ask you to start by filling out the Pyramid Worksheet. And this is on page 30 of the book for those of you guys who are following along. And we're going to start by having you in that worksheet fill out the section titled The Present to identify those activities that currently fill your schedule, identifying those that provide a high quality of life, and we call that the penthouse. We're also going to have you list those activities that detract from a strong quality of life as either the safe house or the outhouse activities. This tool, guys, if you really tap into this, this is going to help you further distinguish the shoulds of your life from the wants, which I talked about several weeks ago in a few of the other exercises. But this one, the pyramid flip and why I wanted to save it until this point of the journey is so that we can really tap into our shoulds from our wants. Seems like a very easy thing to do, but many times, especially entrepreneurs who have a lot to juggle on their plate or sometimes very negative mindset, will focus so many times on the shoulds of their calendar, almost finding it noble to grind it out on the things that they don't want to do, even though they're miserable the entire time doing it, and they neglect the wants until they get older and wiser and realize they could have been doing this the entire time had they built it in properly. So don't fall into that trap, guys. Let's identify the wants now, and let's help you lead a life by design now, capturing these years when you're younger, rather than any point further in the future as you get older and realize you've wasted time. So in the book on page 31, I give you guys Jared Warren's pyramid worksheet of the present. And this triangle, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, and I hope you get your hands on the book, but this triangle is a regular looking triangle with the big base part at the bottom and the skinny pinnacle part at the top. At the top in the present model, we find the activities we love. 
In the middle of the present model on that same triangle, we find the safe house, the activities we neither dislike or love. We're just pretty neutral to those, which can sometimes be the most dangerous of all because they seem very inconsequential when it comes to how we feel about them. But they could be detracting so much from our joy by filling the plate with unnecessary or neutral type things that we don't even recognize them. And then lastly, at the bottom in the big wide section, this is the outhouse. These are activities we dislike. And if you can picture this pyramid, which part is the smallest? It's the part at the top, right? And in this present model, those are the activities that we love. You see, that's how most people live their life when it comes to the pyramid. They live their life where they are doing the activities they love in a very small part at the top. They're doing the activities that might be neutral to them in the middle part, but it's still a bigger section than the ones that they love doing. And then at the bottom, the big, wide foundational section are all the activities they dislike doing. And if you're not careful, most of your calendar could be filled up with those activities that you dislike doing. And many people spend an entire lifetime not knowing how to structure this calendar so that more of the wants can take over where the shoulds or the activities they neither dislike or love in the safe house are currently sitting. That's what I'm going to teach you about today. As I mentioned, at the bottom of the pyramid is the outhouse. Let's start there. This is uninspiring, filled with shoulds. The base level of the pyramid represents the activities of life that you don't enjoy and you likely don't do very well. These tasks I've found typically drain, fade, sabotage entrepreneurs' efforts, promoting a lesser self, to say the least. Later on in the book, as you get there, which parts of it we've already covered in some of these podcast episodes as a group together, these activities will be some of the first to eliminate as you guys develop strategies that will help you delegate these tasks or really just cut them out of your life entirely. But first, and really why I wanted to save this pyramid flip until now as we do a rewind to go back into the six vision building exercises is because hopefully by now, those of you who have been following along have a better idea through the five components of building your strategy, implementing the tactics as we've gone through in the last couple of weeks, you really understand a framework behind eliminating some of these shoulds, and hopefully you'll start seeing how to build in more of your wants. I've had many people tell me before that they wanted to build more wants into their schedule, but based on their title, based on their position, based on their demographic, based on wherever they were in life, they didn't see how that could happen until when until they started applying some of the principles in this book and realized it's actually way easier, even with constraints, than you think to fill up your calendar with more wants. You just have to be intentional about it, guys. You have to establish what tasks, responsibilities, and actions imprison your energy level. And I don't say those words lightly. They imprison your energy level at its lowest and weakest form. Here are a few questions I want you guys to ask yourself, and you're going to come up with even more that are personal to you. Number one, what tasks do I wish I never had to do again? And don't say, well, my demographic, my title, my location, my point of life, my age. Don't say any of that. Pretend that money, time, resources, demographic, none of that is an issue. You could push the magic button right now and decide what tasks you never have to do again in your life. Don't put boundaries on this, guys. Don't think small. What tasks do you wish you never had to do again? Number two, what tasks cause me to habitually procrastinate? It's not that many times those tasks are hard in the second question here. It's because they drain your energy and your enthusiasm so that you continually procrastinate. And then when you finally do get to it, you've had to look that thing in the eye for so long that you've probably in your mind built it up to a bigger task than it had to be. And you do subpar work toward it or you have to grind it out unnecessarily just to get it accomplished. Number three, what tasks cause me the most anxiety or frustration? I'm feeling anxiety now just talking about these things, and I'm just explaining it to you guys. What fun is it to do tasks that you wish you never had to do again, that you habitually procrastinate on, that cause you the most anxiety and frustration? Sounds really negative, right? The problem is we're doing that in our calendars or in our life, even if you're not putting it on a calendar, we're doing it every single day. And lastly, a very seemingly innocent question but it makes a lot of difference. During what task do I have a bad attitude? Now, if you're following along in the book, turn to page 35 and fill in the outhouse activities in the provided pyramid worksheet called The Present. I'll give you just a moment to find it if you've got the book, and then I'll come back. And we're back. I'm glad you took the time to do that. Now, let's look in the middle of the pyramid. That represents the safe house. Those are the activities, as I mentioned, that you are able to accomplish, often with ease and excellence, but not necessarily with a lot of enthusiasm. 
And guys, these tasks, they don't typically hinder your efforts and they typically won't harm you. That's why they're so seemingly innocent and they get filled in without you realizing it. But hear me out, guys. They must be monitored and controlled. Activities in the safe house are often the easiest to mismanage because they do not normally cause direct suffering. You may even feel moderately content operating at this level. I found that with many of my clients out there. But the danger is that over time, it can lead to complacency. Whereas the drudgery of the outhouse incites immediate action because it's painful, the safe house feels comfortable, acceptable, and many times you don't even notice that it's going on. So be aware of this, guys. As we know from our professional achievement, successful living requires us to push beyond the comfort zone, to take risks and grow only then. Only then can we move from passive comfort to passionate achievement. So to identify these activities in which you feel safe but uninspired and unchallenged, ask yourself these following questions. And again, these are just a few to help get your brain thinking. You're going to come up with more on your own as you go through this activity. Number one, what activities do I feel like I'm just going through the motion? Maybe you're even quote unquote successful at those activities. Maybe you find it relatively easy to go through those. But again, that's why it is such a dangerous place to neglect. Number two, what activities are easy but not adding any value to my life? This was a huge one for me as I was seeing this book come together. What activities are not adding value to my life? Number three, what activities do I consistently rank as low priority? I've learned as an entrepreneur that time is incredibly valuable, whether you're using Covey's four quadrant system for urgency or importance or accountability, or you're using something else you have out there, as we get older, guys, we're going to realize even more so than we do today, because we're always learning new things. We're going to realize that we're ranking more and more things as low priority and wondering, you know, why did I do that for so long? Number four, what activities feel safe, but uninspired? This is the one that you may not be able to come up with a lot right at first, but really dig deep. Really ask yourself those questions and you're going to find that there's been a lot of activities that have felt safe that you've done without really a lot of thought many times, but they feel very uninspired. Take a few moments now, turn to page 35 and fill in your safe house activities in the pyramid worksheet called the present. Okay, guys, I'm really glad you took the time to do that. Hopefully you did. Here's my take on this. As you start formulating your own life and as you start seeing this pyramid come together, on some levels, guys, I would rather be operating in the outhouse rather than the safe house. As crazy as that sounds, because when I'm in the outhouse, here's the deal. I am aware that I want to move toward the light, that I want out of the outhouse, that this is painful, that this is not good, that this is something maybe I'm avoiding over and over until I finally have to do it. And it forces me to transition out of the negative, draining, and depressive activities into those that are inspiring. See, there's movement in the outhouse, guys, even though it's so pitiful to stay there and so depressing. There's movement. In fact, in the outhouse, we often daydream when we imagine about what the penthouse feels like or looks like. And we see other people out there that might be living that lifestyle or on social media, at least giving us the picture they're living that lifestyle. But we can daydream. We can imagine what the penthouse feels like or even what it might look like to get a glimmer of that. But in the safe house, guys, many dreams are put on hold. And again, I don't say that lightly. We simply go through the motions, feeling neither pain nor exuberance. It's extremely neutral. And it's here in the safe house. And please hear me out on this, guys. It's here in the safe house that we must be particularly aware and vigilant, for we are far more likely to get stuck here with no forward progress, no momentum, no movement forward than what we would be even if we were down in the bottom of the bottom of the outhouse. And if the safe house wasn't bad enough for keeping us from forward momentum or progress, check this out, guys. It gets even worse because the truth of it is we do have to spend some time participating in the safe house activities. You can dream up a great life, but at some point it's real world where we have to do some of these things. I neither love nor hate cleaning up my office and keeping it all in order. I'm crazy when I get in here and start brainstorming. My staff would tell you, I've got a huge green screen hung up in here sometimes. I've got papers everywhere sometimes. I've got documents all out. I'm mind mapping. I'm putting up window stickies all over the window. And then I've got a high level client that needs to come in here and meet with me. So I've got to clean all of that up. I neither love nor hate doing that. And it's an activity that I really can't delegate. I've got to do it. Still, I consider ways to leverage this time. So for instance, I listen to podcasts or audiobooks while I'm cleaning up my office and getting it in order. I organize early in the morning when nothing else demands my time and attention. And I know some of you hear that and it's like, man, why is this guy talking about cleaning up his office? That's the point, guys. 
The middle of the pyramid is stuff that we rarely think about or we hold it so inconsequential in our mind that it still requires our time. It still requires our effort. It still gets put on the schedule for things that we have to do. But it's things that we rarely ever talk about or think about. It's not attractive. It's not sexy. It's boring. But boring things can fill up the calendar and keep you from living a life by design, keep you from moving towards success or significance for that matter. And when we're in this area, guys, we can forget what living in the penthouse feels like. And we can think that where we are is as good as it gets. Remember Jim Collins saying, I'm looking at the book right now on my shelf. Good is often the enemy of great. What a profound saying that I will hold with me for the rest of my life. Things are good, but they sure keep you from getting to great. Our ultimate goal, guys, is the penthouse, the peak, the summit. This represents everything that we want to go toward in our own personal lives. And it may look different for me than it does for Curtis, than it does for you. But this is where we want to get to. This is what holds the activities you love doing in our design here and in our graph to challenge you, motivate you, help you grow. And the reason that these make their way to the top is most likely you're especially skilled in these areas and your excellence contributes to more and more success. But if we're not building them into the calendar, if we get caught up in the outhouse or if we spend a lot of time in the safe house, we are not going to get to the penthouse. So as I mentioned early on, guys, the goal of this pyramid flip, just as the name suggests, is to flip this pyramid so that most of your time is spent in the penthouse, that big, what was the base bottom part where all of your outhouse activities were, we're going to flip the pyramid upside down. So now the point is on the bottom, the big wide base is up top, almost like a funnel. And ideally, you should spend as much time as possible in the penthouse. I'll say that again. Ideally, you should spend as much time as possible in the penthouse. But in subsequent chapters, we discuss activities that will help you make the transition from the outhouse to the penthouse. For now, in this section, we want to define those activities, those tasks, those moments that move you closer to your ultimate goal. So just as we had a set of questions before to get your mind turning, I do the same thing here in the penthouse. Ask yourself these questions and then create ones of your own. Number one, if I had nothing scheduled for the rest of today, what would I love to do? Again, money aside, demographics aside, obligations aside, marital and children responsibilities aside. Guys, we're just dreaming right here for a second so that you can get to know yourself better than maybe you ever have before. If I had nothing scheduled for the rest of the day, what would I love to do? Number two, during what tasks do I feel most alive? This is a question, especially for guys that might seem a little bit silly or dreamy or fantasy or whatever, fill in the blank. But ask yourself, during what tasks do I feel the most alive? Because it's not until you ask questions of yourself like that, that you really begin to understand yourself. I've learned more over the past year that vulnerability is such a position of strength. Read Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly, and come back and tell me that vulnerability is a position of weakness, as we as guys many times, and some of you ladies out there as well, I don't want to exclude you, but especially for us as guys, we don't want to let our guard down and be vulnerable. Why? Because it's going to expose something. We're going to be vulnerable. That's going to be weakness. Wrong. It's a position of strength. Where do you guys feel the most alive? Number three, if failure were not an option, what would I do? Go all out, guys. Spend as much money as you want. Dream as big as you want, because in this scenario, you're not going to fail. And I know the naysayers in your own lives that you share these exercises with that you're so excited about doing. People are going to say, if failure were not an option, we would all succeed. Of course, failure is going to be an option. Shut those people up for a moment, because again, the purpose of this is to dream big. Why? Because until you dream big, you will never understand where you're trying to go. And you'll never understand yourself fully to really know where you're trying to get to. And number four, what activities cause me to feel the most inspired and energized? Now, just as I did before, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds here. Turn to page 35. Fill in your penthouse activities in the pyramid worksheet provided called the present. Okay, welcome back. So you see how this thing's working, right? For right now, your pyramid looks like a traditional pyramid with most of the room at the bottom, two-thirds of the pyramid. A lot of your time is likely spent in the outhouse or the safe house. It's just how we operate as humans in our crazy society today, especially in the West. And there's only a small percentage likely up in the penthouse. Again, this is on page 35 of the book for those of you who have it. 
And as I mentioned, ideally, we want to flip the pyramid. We want to allow greater space in the penthouse than in the outhouse. And the goal of identifying our personal pyramid is to allow our penthouse to be our common, everyday living space. This is not just a fun drill that you go through to discover a few things about yourself, even though you'll do that. This is, the goal is, identifying our personal pyramid so that we live in the penthouse the majority of our time every day. That is our living space. It is a habit that you build in. In fact, I would go as far to say as you should build in your life to avoid the outhouse at all costs. Financially, you may not be able to do some of that right now as far as hiring help, those sort of things, but it should be your goal. It should be your aim. Life is too short. Relationships around you are too precious to have you moody and on edge all the time like I was for many years. So at some point, you've got to hire this out. You've got to delegate it. You've got to offload it. It's causing too much pressure and noise. You don't need it in your life, and it's going to affect not only you, but it's going to affect those around you. Make it your aim. Make it your goal to eliminate these outhouse activities altogether. Most importantly, guys, we don't want a small penthouse. We want a big one. Flip that pyramid. We don't want to spend a little time in the penthouse. We want to spend almost all of our time in the penthouse. Remember that if you take nothing else away from this episode. Life should be lived with great abundance in the penthouse, whatever that means for your own personal goals. So on page 37, I've provided you with a flipped pyramid from my own activities. And these things are going to change over time. Keep it in a three ring binder, carry all of this stuff around with you. These things are going to change over time, but you're going to get an idea right now in 2017, what this looks like. And I think it's going to excite the heck out of you if you do this the right way. For some of you, I would go as far as to say it would be life changing. That's not a stretch by any means. So you've seen my pyramid now in 37. So on 38 and beyond, I give you the chance to flip your own pyramid, writing in outhouse activities at the bottom of the upside down pyramid provided, which is called the ideal. So we move from the present where you are now to the ideal and we fill in the spacious, the bigger pit house activities with activities you absolutely love doing. And the point of this is twofold. If you haven't picked up on it yet, first, Like all activities in this section, you're working to identify your vision, the six vision building activities. Second, you want to identify those outhouse and safe house activities that you can stop doing, delegate, or otherwise strategize to eliminate. Again, dream big on this, guys, because we want to strategize how, if we can't now, in the future, we will eliminate these things and work toward that. We don't want to imprison our future, guys. We don't want to continue to do what makes us go crazy or is painful. And my challenge to you is to free your future from the tyranny of the past. Stop doing the things that you've always done, even if you don't realize they're causing pain for you, like in the safe house, they more than likely are if they're not in the penthouse. Some of you have written in like crazy about the next section that we move to, where you guys have made plans to delegate or eliminate many of the activities that you have going on in your life that you can now tie back to the safe house or the outhouse now that we've covered this. Remember, this is not perfect. This is a moving document that you will always change, but the flip pyramid is the ideal. And as you work through the book and get past this section in subsequent pages, you're going to work to transition your day-to-day activity so that your daily schedule reflects the inverted pyramid, not the regular stand-up pyramid that you're used to seeing. And if you remember, for those of you who have gone through the unique ability, we absolutely did that. We got even more clarity on how to spend time in the penthouse, identifying our unique abilities. So take time right now on page 39, fill out your flipped pyramid worksheet called The Ideal. We've gotten into the five tactics for implementing your strategic plan. For those of you who have heard the episodes, You're following along with me here. If you haven't heard those, push pause and go back and listen to the live episodes where I'm highlighting the book. But you guys know that implementation tactic number one was leveraging your physical, mental, and emotional environment using this zone, this environment you set up called the inspiration zone. Number two was your personal board of advisors that I went over last week. Now we're moving on into number three. Implementation tactic number three, make the everyday winnable game plan. And yes, guys, at one point in my life, I would have thought making everyday winnable was just hocus pocus, Pollyanna, pie in the sky. You're going to have failures. You are going to lose. How can you say that every day is winnable? But here's the deal. You can fail and still massively win the day. If what? If you learn from it and you look at failure as feedback which I learned from my good friend, Lanny Basham, so much. 
Thank you so much, Lanny, for teaching me so much about failing and looking at failure as feedback, not failure as the end result. So let's dive in to making every day the winnable game plan. This section starts off with an awesome quote from an amazing, amazing man that I've learned so much from, and that's Coach John Wooden. John Wooden says, you can't do anything about yesterday. The door to the past has been shut and the key has been thrown away. You can do nothing about tomorrow. It is yet to come. However, tomorrow is in large part determined by what you do today. So make today a masterpiece. You have control over that. What an awesome quote by an awesome man who taught me so much. Go back and listen to my episode with Dr. Jason Selk and our conversations about John Wooden and what Jason Selk learned from Coach Wooden personally one-on-one through their time together. Awesome, awesome episode. Just Google Jared Warren and Jason Selk and it should pull right up. Guys, have you thought about what a successful life is? Most people have this big grandiose vision of what a successful life is, but it's nothing more than a succession of successful days. But the question many times, as crazy as it sounds for us as entrepreneurs, business owners, employees that are striving for peak performance, is we don't really know what makes for a successful day. If you ask somebody, do you know what makes for a successful day? Yeah, absolutely. What? Well, I kind of know. I'm not really sure. They can't really spell it out. They can't really tell you. When we get down to it, guys, when we contemplate changing our lives in significant ways, it's easy to become overwhelmed. It's easy to really think about living this successful life or the significant life as just a crazy, overwhelming thing when we think about all of the things we have to accomplish. Guys, whenever we contemplate changing our lives in significant ways, it's easy to become overwhelmed, thinking that we have to accomplish everything to feel as though that we've accomplished anything. Have you felt that way before? I've got to accomplish everything on my to-do list today to accomplish anything and feel good about it, feel successful. But the truth is, the day is seldom as long as our to-do list. More work creates more work, I've found. I'm sure you felt that way as well. But the solution is not to throw up our hands or to bow our heads in resignation and say, well, that's just the way it is. The solution is to make every day winnable. And I want to empower you with that here in this section. I want you to make every day winnable by identifying the three things that if we did those things every day, those things would pay the greatest dividends. Curtis gives an example in the book that if he does 50 push-ups, keeps five meetings with great clients, and spends at least one hour of uninterrupted time being present, that means playing, reading, or rolling around on the floor with his kids each day, his day has been a victory. The important thing is to make sure that the achievement of these goals is under your control, specifically defined and measurable and realizable every day. That last part's the big one, realizable every day. For the past five years, Curtis has taken the strategy to the next level by writing down his three specific biggest wins for the day in a journal and also reviewing his next day's schedule while visualizing the three biggest wins he wants to have tomorrow. Remember, guys, big changes do not happen overnight. They are the result of small improvements made each and every single day. So on page 123, we provided the Make Every Day Winnable Game Plan. I want you to take time, as easy as this may seem, to write down your three make every day winnable game plan goals in the space provided below. Evaluate the progress you make regularly and keep updating your winnable game plan goals as needed to keep you engaged and growing. One of the coaching tips I provided in the book was to adopt Robert Pagliarini's doorknob principle. Before you turn your doorknob to walk into your home at the end of the day, stop, pause, release any pent up tension from the day and consider how you will connect with your family. Those who are even more important than anything you've done, who are right on the other side of that door, connect with that feeling in your mind, then enter. This will help you clear your head, be fully present, be 100% alive with your family. Those are winnable game plan moments. Those are things that in the moment seem like small acts that done time and time and time again will compound into habits that will make you act different, feel different, imagine your future differently, and treat those around you differently to build massive significance in the future more than you've ever realized. I hope you've taken a lot away from these two sections today because they are very, very important though many of the things we discussed today could seem like very small and insignificant things. Guys, I love my time here with you. I love the comments that you're sending in. Please keep doing so. If you would like to connect directly with me, please shoot an email to my team at info at success101podcast.com or you can catch me in the world of social media on Facebook under the Success 101 Podcast Facebook page or on Instagram under the name at Success 101 Podcast. 
I'll catch you guys on the next awesome episode of the Success 101 podcast. Until then.